Philadelphia Eagles were obviously an incredibly successful team last season, dominating throughout the course of their regular season and making it all the way to Super Bowl 57, but unfortunately, there is a group of people out there that has consistently tried to discredit what the Eagles were able to accomplish, continuously saying things like, well, they didn't play anybody, or they had a Mickey Mouse run to the Super Bowl, and whether you agree with things like that or not, I think it's safe to say that there is no possible way that people are going to be able to do that this upcoming season, because if you look at the adversity that the Eagles are going to have to face, there's no denying that it will not be an easy road back to the Super Bowl for the Birds. So the question is, can the Eagles overcome this adversity or will their ultimate test prove to be too much for them? Well, we're going to talk all about that in this video today, but before we do that, make sure you go down and subscribe to this channel for more consistent Philadelphia Eagles content coming throughout this entire offseason and heading into next season. Around 80% of the people that do watch these videos are not subscribed, so if you like Eagles content and you're watching these videos, why not hit the subscribe button? Okay, and now with all that annoying stuff out of the way, let's get into the video. Last year, there is no doubt that the Eagles were one of, if not the most dominant team in the entire NFL. They finished with a record of 14-3, which was good for the best record in the entire league, tied with the Kansas City Chiefs. They also obviously had the number one record in the NFC East and the NFC, and it was just in general a historical regular season for the Eagles. 14-3 was their best record in franchise history, and they had multiple players on their team break franchise records as well. A.J. Brown, for example, set the Eagles' single season receiving yards record with 1,400. 496 yards. Devontae Smith set the record for most catches by an Eagles wide receiver in a single season at 95. Jalen Hurts tied the all-time Eagles record for the most combined touchdowns with 35, and he broke his own record for the most rushing touchdowns by an Eagles quarterback with 13. And to add on to that, the Eagles defense also broke their single season sack record as they had 70 sacks in the 2022 NFL season, which was also good for the third most sacks by any team in NFL history in a single year. And in addition to this, the Eagles Eagles team in general had eight Pro Bowlers, nine Pro Bowl alternates, and six All Pros. And the Eagles weren't just winning games, they were absolutely dominating teams. And that dominance continued into the postseason, where the Eagles got two dominant wins over the Giants and 49ers respectively, and they reached Super Bowl 57 versus the Kansas City Chiefs, where they ultimately ended up losing in arguably one of the best Super Bowls of all time. But still, nonetheless, it was a very successful season for the Eagles, and in their playoff run, the Eagles continued to break more records. But despite the overwhelming success of the Eagles during the season and the dominance that they put on display, there were still a lot of people trying to discredit what the Eagles had accomplished. I mean, I feel like as an Eagles fan throughout the course of the season, all I heard was people saying, oh, well, the Eagles actually haven't beaten anybody that good. Their schedule's been super easy and pretty much just calling them frauds, which I always thought was a pretty stupid argument because at the end of the day, for one, you can only play who's on your schedule. Plus, it's not like the Eagles were only playing the bottom feeders of the league. They did have some games where they faced some tough competition and I'm definitely not saying that they had a super hard schedule because I definitely don't think that that's the case, but I always thought that it was a little ridiculous people trying to discredit them and calling them frauds because at a certain point, you just have to look at the Eagles and admit that they're a great team rather than saying that everyone else just sucks. You just have to give a team their props. And like I said, it's not like the Eagles hadn't beaten anyone. I mean, before the Super Bowl, the Eagles had a 9-1 record versus teams with a winning record, including the playoffs, which was tied for the second best record in NFL history, which seems pretty good to me. And in addition, I did a video back in February just before the Super Bowl and after the NFC Championship game detailing how the Eagles had proved everyone wrong a little bit more in detail than I went into in this video. So you can go check that out. I'll put it at the end of the video. Just finish watching this video first so I still get the YouTube retention. Okay, but why did I tell you all this? At this point, you're just saying, Philly, shut up and get to the point. I said all that to make a point that it does not matter how good the Eagles are. It does not matter what they may accomplish. There will always be people that disrespect and doubt the Philadelphia Eagles. And now going into this season, you better believe the doubters are not going away. They're as loud as ever. I mean, I've seen people saying that them losing their coordinators and Shane Steichen and Jonathan Gannon is going to end up being a big problem, which I personally do not agree with. I think that going from Shane Steichen to Brian Johnson is going to be a seamless transition because Johnson's been here the past two seasons. He knows the offense. He knows what works. And he's obviously known Jalen Hurts for a very long time. So I expect no problems on the offensive side of the ball. And then defensively, I actually think Sean Desai could be an upgrade over Jonathan Gannon. I mean, I think we all saw the deficiencies in Jonathan Gannon's defensive scheme on the national stage in the Super Bowl. But those issues existed far before we even got to that point. They were there the entire two years he was the Eagles defensive coordinator. So I think Sean Desai coming in, he's going to be a little bit more aggressive 
in terms of his play calling and I expect him to be an upgrade. So I see no problems with their coordinator situation. I'm actually really confident about that. But the main thing that I see people talking about, and this is really what made me want to make this video in the first place, is the Eagles schedule, which is significantly harder than their schedule was last year. And like I said, I never thought calling last year's schedule a cupcake schedule or something like that was ever valid, but there's no denying that this year's schedule is far more difficult, as the Eagles have arguably the NFL's most difficult schedule of any team this season. I mean, the opponents they will face this season had a combined record of 161, 123, and 4 in 2022. That's good for a win percentage of 56.6%, making it the hardest strength of schedule in the NFL. Now, obviously, that doesn't mean that these teams are going to end up with a top combined win percentage after the season ends, but heading into the season, that's what the Eagles are up against. I mean, the Eagles have some incredibly tough matchups next season, most notably the Kansas City Chiefs, obviously the Super Bowl champions, taking out the Eagles in Super Bowl 57 in a very close game, and they definitely have probably the best player in the entire NFL in Patrick Mahomes, and obviously they're still going to be a very good team next year. You got the 49ers, who obviously the Eagles met in the NFC Championship game last year, and this is really a growing rivalry, I think, fueled by the fans and some of the 49ers players, but they have a very talented roster. They got some explosive weapons on the offensive side of the ball and probably the best defense in the entire league. You also have teams like the Miami Dolphins who there's some speed demons down there in Miami. They got some explosive offensive weapons, mainly Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle. They just keep adding speed to that offense. You got Tua under center. He's evolving as a player as well and their defense is also improving. They're a very good team. You have the Dallas Cowboys who obviously the Eagles are going to see twice as they do every single year as their division rivals. Probably the Eagles number one rival in the entire league and they had some solid offseason moves to make their team better as well. You got the Buffalo Bills with Josh Allen, who's a very good quarterback, one of the best in the entire league, and they're a consistent Super Bowl contender as well, just a great team overall. You got a team like the New York Jets, who they had a really good roster last year, and they just added a Hall of Fame caliber quarterback in Aaron Rodgers, so we're going to see how good they are. And that's not even all the good teams that the Eagles are going to face next year, but there's no doubt that all these are going to be incredibly tough matchups for the Eagles this season. And that doesn't even take into account the actual schedule itself and how it plays out. I mean, the start of the schedule is isn't too bad in my opinion. I mean, their first five games I think are all very winnable. They have the New England Patriots week one in Foxborough. Tom Brady's going to return, so that's going to add a little fire to that game, but I still think that the Eagles should probably win that one. Then they go home to play the Vikings for their home opener on Thursday night football, which I think they should win. Then they got the Buccaneers Monday night football. I think that should be another win. Then they have the Commanders at home. I think they should win that game as well. And then they go away to play the Rams in Los Angeles, which I think they should probably win that game as well. So I think that there's a good chance that they start off 5-0. and I think they get off to a really hot start just based on those first five games but I do think they could definitely slip and maybe drop one of these games so there's obviously no guarantees in the NFL and we'll see how it ends up playing out but it starts to get a little bit more difficult from this point on I mean they have two tough games coming up next one versus the New York Jets and Aaron Rodgers and another versus the Miami Dolphins and I think they could win both of these games but more than likely I see them probably splitting or who knows maybe they lose both and then after that they have the commanders in week eight so I think that's probably another win but I mean overall the first part of their schedule is not that bad. I see the Eagles probably sitting around 7-1 and one at worst 6-2 at this point and looking good moving forward. But then we hit week 9 which quite possibly kicks off the toughest stretch of regular season games for the Eagles in recent history. Starting with the Dallas Cowboys in week 9 and then they have their bye week then they play the Kansas City Chiefs on Monday night football in Arrowhead then they have the Bills on a short week then the 49ers and then the Cowboys again on Sunday night football in Dallas. I mean that is an incredibly tough stretch of games for the Eagles. And Eagles writer and reporter Ruben Frank seems to think, like I said earlier, that this could be one of the toughest stretches of schedule in Eagles regular season history. As he wrote an article saying, quote, from November 5th through December 10th, the Eagles faced the 12 and 5 Cowboys, 14 and 3 Chiefs, 13 and 3 Bills, 13 and 4 49ers, and the 12 and 5 Cowboys again, with the Chiefs at Arrowhead on a Monday night, the Bills at home on a short week, and the second Cowboys game in North Texas on a Sunday night. That's five opponents and a combined 64 and 20 record in 2022, a 76.2% win percentage. Think about how hard it is to face five straight teams that won 12 games the previous year. Most teams only face one or two opponents all year that won 12 games the year before. It's rare to face five in one season. 
getting them all in a row, that's just about impossible. So it's definitely safe to say the Eagles are going to have their hands full these five games. And that's not to mention that the very next week, the Eagles have to turn around and play the Seattle Seahawks away, which is always tough. Then they face the Giants on Christmas Day at home, then the Cardinals, and then the Giants again to close out the season. So that is a very tough schedule, to say the least. And that five-game stretch, I think, could end up defining the Eagles' season, and it's going to be critical for them to pull out a couple wins there. So yeah, the Eagles are no doubt going to be up against it, but is it ridiculous to say that even despite all of this, I'm not really too worried? I mean, I truly believe in this Eagles team. I believe in their roster. I believe in their quarterback. I believe in their coaches. I believe in the GM, obviously. I believe in their ownership. And also, very importantly, I believe in their culture and their leaders. And I also believe in their ability to go up against the NFL's best and come out victorious. And I think as long as they start out the year pretty hot and beat the teams that they should beat, pretty much like they did all last season, and then they reach this five-game stretch with a good record, I believe in their ability to win at least two, three, maybe even four of these games, because I think regardless of the fact that these other teams that the Eagles have to play are elite, the Eagles themselves are elite as well. I think there's no secret in that. I don't think you can really argue with that. And now, I look forward to a season where the Eagles will have a chance to prove the doubters wrong once again, and I expect them to go out and do just that. And I also think that the potential is there for 2023 to be a very very special year for the birds. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got for this video, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. How do you think the Eagles will be able to handle the adversity they have to face this season with this incredibly tough schedule? I also got a quick, small, brief announcement. Not really a crazy announcement or anything, but I am currently working on some stuff behind the scenes that I think you guys are going to really like. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet, but just know that that's coming at some point in the near future, so keep your eye out for that. And if you did enjoy this video, make sure you drop a like on it and subscribe so you don't miss others like it. Again, only around 20% of the people that watch these videos are actually subscribed. So if you're in that other 80%, make sure you click the button if you are watching these videos and you enjoy what you see. And if you want to see that video I was talking about from February, you can go watch it right here. And then I also have a video where I predicted every single game on the Eagles schedule, so you can go watch this one right here. I don't know why I'm double pointing, but whatever, we're just going to go with it. And yeah, that's it. That's all we got for this one, guys. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.